someone, Dee Dee, that we know. We have obviously two past winners on the, on the ride right now, but someone that knows this course inside and out, someone who has been successful at the top and also had a rough day out there, is the man we have on the phone right now. He's all the way from Germany, Jan Ferdano, our three-time Ironman world champ. How are you, my friend? Hey, guys. Pretty good. And you feel a little bit guilty sitting on my uh, comfy chair right here. <laughs> You're lucky we didn't put you on Ruby and make you crank it out with those four. They're cutthroats. I tell you what, it, it's hard going at the moment. I, I just got back on the horse after a little time off, and, oh, man, I feel their pain. <laughs> I All bet. right, Jan. Well, let, let me let me rattle off some statistics here. Uh, 2008 gold medalist, Beijing Olympics winner, 70.3 World Championship, 2015-2018 winner, Ironman World Championship, 2015, 2016, 2019. Dude, your parents must be really proud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, considering Mum told me um, uh, in the beginning was worried about me going into the profession of triathlon, um, I think I've turned her around. Okay. Oh, She's okay. endorsing just, it now. Just now turned her around. But li seriously, though, you make it look almost easy out there, but you have had your setbacks as well. You had a difficult finish in 2017. You had a did not start in 2018 due to injury. How do you deal with those setbacks and move forward? And did you ever experience doubt that you'd be able to make it back? Yeah, you know, you look at those statistics and, and everything looks like it's, it's a linear graph, but you forget that life is uh, very seldom or almost never a linear graph. And, and people also forget that there was a long time before 2008 where uh, all I did was lose. And like dead said serious, 2008 was the first race I ever I ever raced and I've been a pro, for, I, I ever won, sorry, and I've been a pro for seven years. So you learn to deal with adversity and you learn to really see the lessons, you know, in the end, um, I think if, uh, if you're pushing the limit, if you're trying to find that fine line, uh, eventually it's going to come and haunt you. So I think uh, I've also just been tremendously lucky over the years. I would say, yeah, maybe some luck and some great preparation. And I think that's awesome. Great answer, because failure is a part of success. There's no denying it. Um, you've had some amazing successes, right? You've done some awesome stuff. Didi just listed half of them. Um, let me ask you this. Do you still have the motivation to go out there and achieve something? Is there something left? Are, I mean, I think I know the answer, but what's, what's out there for you, Jan? Yeah, it's, it, it's again, you know, it, it, it's a year like this one um, where I, I will most likely go out with zero races and, and just, you know, um, really realizing how precious this privilege is that we have to go out and, and race with the triathlon family, but also just race to, to find that limit and um, I'm, I'm still curious I still think there is more to be had and and even after last year in Kona I'm, I'm, I'm just hungry and, and you know looking forward to that feeling of putting your head down and and you know pushing the cranks as hard as I can and, and, and just racing you know it's such a pure thing it's um, it's if you look at life and you think of life later on it, it's so beautifully simple as well you know it's black and white you have a great day you have a bad day you win you lose and I think it's never as clear cut again after that. So I'm really, really looking forward, but, but mainly actually quite just, you know, enjoying the ride for what it is now. Well, you, you said it yourself. I mean, some would say last year you executed nearly like the perfect race. You set a course record by one minute, 26 seconds, going 7.51.13. Do you think you can go faster? What, what proverbial meat did you leave on the bone out there in the lava fields? Like where can you find more perfection? Where can you improve on the perfect race? Um, you know what, I think last year was definitely one of the very few races where I would say all around that I, I was just happy. I was just content with a great day and actually, you know, had, had all these emotions through it. But um, I think uh, I'm, I'm still looking for that great battle, that head-to-head -head in Kona. Um, I, I honestly, I couldn't even tell you what the situation is. It's one of those things you really, you know, when you're in the moment, whether it's, um, it's everything you've wanted and everything you're looking for. And um, I definitely feel that in terms of my performance, there's still, there's still goals I, I, I have. You know, I, I think I could run that marathon a little bit faster, but maybe it's just a utopia and maybe <laughs> it was just as good as it gets. I'll, uh, and we'll hopefully know uh, in another 365 days. Yeah, there you go. I, I bet we will. Um, so what about this? Anything on the bucket list as far as races go, Ironman races that you haven't done you'd like to? 
Um, you know what the, the the beautiful thing about Ironman is that there's a race on pretty much most weekends in in a normal year uh, in in so many places. I haven't raced in South America um, yet, which I would really love to do. I haven't even raced a, a long distance race in in Asia or Australia. You know, there's just there's so much out there um, that I still want to see. It's just you know when you were that focused on Kona. Uh, it really has to work out perfectly with the calendar. So once I've kind of done the Kona thing, or not done it, I don't think I'll ever be quite happy to, to hang up the shoes, but um, I think I'll definitely have to add a year to my career to, to do the races that normally don't fit the calendar, that are a mission to get to, but are just simply beautiful. And um, yeah, like I said, I think uh, South America is pretty high on my priority list there. So, Jan, all week we've been showing highlights of race week, reliving some awesome memories of all things Ironman World Championship and some spectacular pre-race events that happen. You are obviously hugely busy during uh, race week with media, sponsors, what have you. How do you manage to carve out a little bit of quiet time for yourself to calm yourself and calm your mind pre-race in the midst of all of the celebration? It's, it's always one of those things. It's another thing I've learned this year. And to be quite frank, this year is the first year that I've actually been able to enjoy a world championship title as such in training and in every day, just because life itself slowed down. And, you know, I, I wasn't on a plane uh, every week and, and, uh, and, and on a call every day and, and trying to do this and trying to do that. So um, it really is something that comes along and, and I think something that you have to enjoy as well. You know, I, I, I do have to say I, I enjoy the hype around it. I enjoy, um, yeah, just the recognition that comes with those kind of engagements too. But, uh, you know, let's be honest, there are also great possibilities. I've always said that uh, winning a world title is not enough if you want to be a, a, a professional athlete, then simply winning races is not enough. You have to do more. And, and that's what these kind of engagements provide you with, is opportunity. They open doors. You get to meet people. People get to hear your story. And therefore, you know, an exchange happens. And, and, and that's how you can further yourself, um, you know, uh, aside from the sport itself. But, of course, it's always a very fine balance that um, I'm lucky enough to, to seem to find with my best buddy, uh, Felix, who, who always helps me out in these things. Oh, super. Great answer. Uh, here's another one. Do you have any tips for the folks that are doing Ironman VR 27, it's a full Ironman in 17 hours. Any tips? Um, you know what? Uh, the thing is just Ironman is such a patience game. Um, when you feel great at the beginning, do yourself a favor, cut it down. I think that's, that's the one thing. But I think the biggest thing is the day before, make sure that whatever you do, it makes you happy. You've got to be calm in your mind. You've got to be in a good space. You've got to be, um, you know, you've got to be content with what you do. And in the end, Ironman racing is so much more about, you know, breaking your boundaries, breaking the, the no in your inner head, that it's so much more important to be fresh in your mind than to have, you know, that extra 5K run that's not going to get you anywhere or, you know, having uh, resisted that, piece of chocolate the night before when you really wanted it. Just um, go out there, make sure you're doing it for the right reasons, and, and, and uh, yeah, that will get you the best results. Super. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for your time. You've been very patient with us. One more question for you. A. Ola Mao, we've been asking all week, this year's Iron Man theme, uh, A. Ola Mao, what does this, uh, how does this theme resonate uh, with you? Um, I'm sorry, the line just cut out. I, I didn't hear that question. Keith, what does it mean? to just keep living. What does that line or theme this year mean to you? Just keep living. Aola Mao. Just keep living, you said. Sorry, I don't know. Yes, all of a that's, that it. Audio is that's it. Yes, correct. <laughs> correct. Um, yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm, just is one of those terms that's become so relative. I think um, just to be aware rather than just let it all, you know, pass you by. Be aware, be conscious of, of what you do and, and be conscious one of those things that's helped me the most is being aware that our time here is endless, uh, is not endless, sorry, and, and that you have a certain amount of time in which you can realize your goals and which you can realize your dreams and um, just make sure you don't always push it out to the next day. Excellent answer. So good. Thank you so much. The only thing I'll ask you now, and you don't have to answer by proving it, but did you even bother to put pants on for this interview? I'm just, I'm curious, a little throwback uh, question there. Um, hopefully the, 
Don't answer that. Anyway, <laughs> thanks very much. It's our three-time Ironman world champion. I didn't hear it. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't hear I'll, it. <laughs> I'll, t- I'll text, I'll text you'll, you'll you later. You'll be glad. You'll be glad for I'll that. I'll text you later. All right. Text th- me th- and I'll give you an answer. <laughs> thank you very much. And it's great to see you. Our three-time Ironman world champion, Jan Ferdino. And just so I don't look weird, Didi, weirder than normal, he did a very clever Facebook post early in the pandemic where he didn't have pants on. And so we like to reference that because it shows that uh, sense of humor, I think, that a champion like that has and manages to balance everything. 